Poly 302 dataset construction and statistics assignments. There are two statistics assignments that are required uh, to be completed by SPSS. Uh, both of the assignments are online and they're fairly comprehensive. They're like three-page documents that give you a breakdown of what's required. So what I'm going to do here is uh, discuss each of the assignments in turn. But before I do that, I'm going to give a quick overview of some of the data sets that are out there. And then uh, after each of the uh, the reading of the assignments, I'm going to take you through data construction. I'm going to show you uh, where to get the data sets, how to use Excel, a little bit of code, and I'm going to show you how to create a cross-sectional data set for ordinary least squares regression or uh, logistic regression, and uh, how to create a, a dyadic uh, longitudinal data set a time series data set for your uh, auto regression, which is the second assignment. The principal source of data for the study and the testing of hypotheses of the causes of war is the Correlates of War data set in the Correlates of War project. This was started at the University of Michigan by J. David Singer in the 1960s when the University of Michigan uh, obtained a large computer and this allowed rapid calculation of statistics. Now this uh, data set, the COW, has lots of different uh, sub data sets that are related. Uh, the principal ones of which are the militarized interstate dispute data set which looks at disputes including those disputes that escalate to war as well as the national military capabilities data set which has data on all countries since Napoleon, with some uh, exceptions, and it, you know there are surrogates in there. Uh, before there was GDP, um, the data set uh, then uses about energy production and steel production as other surrogates of industrial power. So these are the uh, key web links for the correlates of war, and you can see in the correlates of war there's a large number of different data sets. You do not need to uh, explore these uh, other data sets unless you really want to. I'm really looking for a simple standardized uh, creation of a data set and uh, a test of hypotheses on that data set. Um, and so I'm going to show you the data that I, I recommend you use, but you are always welcome to create a more ambitious model if you want, as long as it doesn't uh, take too much extra time because these are not very large assignments. You can also see the polity data set, uh, which actually uh, looks at the state of governance, typically uh, how authoritarian or democratic a uh, country is. So it's sort of an intrastate uh, analysis, but it, we find it very useful for hypotheses when we think the uh, type of regime in a state has an influence on whether or not it would go to war. Uh, and it can be uh, easily adapted. It was uh, uh, originally uh, created by Ted Robert Gurr, and it's up to the polity uh, four uh, stage. This is a variety of other data set, including the ICBP uh, from McGill University at the very top, International Crisis Behavior Project set up by Michael Breacher. Uh, you've got the Uppsala Conflict uh, Data Program. You've got ICPSR with its data. Uh, you got the treaty obligations data. So it's there, and it's just a lot of data out there on the internet. Um, you should know, you know the different types of data out there just very, very uh, casually. But uh, the correlates of war and the polity four are going to be the data sets you're most frequently going to be using. So in this section, we're going to look at creating a cross-sectional data set. So first, I'm going to go through the assignment. And then uh, in the uh, following uh, video, I'm going to actually show you how to construct a cross-sectional data set by using data that's available online. So the first uh, statistics paper uh, requires you to use cross-sectional data. So it, in this uh, first cross-sectional uh, data set, you have to either apply the linear regression ordinary least squares technique in which you're, you're going to use a continuous dependent variable. In other words, a dependent variable with many values. Um, you could, for example, use the hostility level of the MID uh, variable, which um, goes from no militarized action all the way up to war. It's got five categories, but um, it's good enough 
to be considered a continuous level variable uh, for the mechanics of an ordinary least squares regression. You can also use a logistic regression, and that, that is where the dependent variable is dichotomous, so it would be on or off. Uh, for example, a country goes to war or it doesn't go to war. Uh, and so you could take, for example, the hostility dependent variable, and you could recode it. You could recode 1 to 4 as non-war and 5 as war. Or if uh, the particular uh, period you're looking at, the cross-sectional period you're looking at, uh, doesn't have that, uh, doesn't have any wars at all, uh, you could have sub-war categories. So you'd, you'd categorize 1 to 3 as non-war and then 4 to 5 as war. So there's some flexibility uh, in the recode. Now, just a reminder, this is a course on the causes of war between states, so we're obviously looking at a data set that's interstate and not intrastates. And the dependent variable should be war or peace or some variation of it, because that's the subject of the course. Uh, you have to get your data set approved, so once you've uh, decided on how you want to set it up, uh, you would uh, talk to me, and I would guide you through getting the uh, data set put together. Um, I, I, so I would recommend that you do it during the labs that we have in class and that you do it on Excel, which is why I'd like you to look at the Excel tutorial that's a part of the uh, syllabus for the course. Now the statistics paper also have to include in the appendix the output, uh, which is the, uh, the, the uh, re reporting results from the uh, SPSS program as well as the syntax. So you got to click uh, paste whenever you do a command and this is important for me. I can read the syntax even if you can't and it tells me what you did. You don't have to attach the data set because you'll already have emailed it to me prior uh, for approval. So once you finish the data set, email it to me. And there's actually an, an, an individual grade for the data sets that, that's apart from the grading of the statistics paper. If you have any uh, questions, you can always email me beforehand. And you would email uh, this, this paper to me um, uh, in a Word or a PDF uh, format. I prefer Word because I can put comments into the uh, paper. Uh, if I put the comments in a PDF, it'll be in little balloons on the side and they may not be as easily apparent. So the data for the statistics paper must be assembled, created, in effect by you. And the complexity of this process is taken into consideration in the grading of the paper. So the harder the uh, data set you choose, uh, it'll definitely affect your grade. I expect most people to go to the Correlates of War, National Military Capabilities, and MIDB data sets. And uh, I'm going to show you precisely where to go and how to get these and how to process them and extract the data and to sort of apply them uh, in an Excel file. You can certainly go to other sources, um, but you don't have to. And I, I, I think, you know, in terms of uh, uh, time issues, this is really a course about training you to do the causes of war and the principal techniques of statistics that apply to that. Uh, you might want to save a more ambitious project for another course uh, or uh, uh, perhaps um, a seminar. Now, you're going to have to have a minimum of 300 cases, uh, but exceptions can be made, so speak with me if your data set uh, hits a roadblock. Uh, for example, there's less than 200 countries in the world, and of course, we have less than 200 years of data on any individual country. So, uh, obviously, 300 in international relations is, is um, perhaps unattainable. Now, statistics paper one uh, must use uh, linear uh, ordinary least squares regression or logistic regression, so you got to make sure that your dependent variable is has the right number of categories. If you're losing logit regression, it's got to have two categories. You can use the recode function in SPSS to reduce the values, uh, the, the categories of a dependent variable that you would use normally in linear regression and reduce it down to two categories, uh, you know, as long as you justify it and explain it. Uh, and I, you know, I have to restate this. If you're going to use logistic regression, don't forget to report model improvement. Okay? And when you're writing your, your paper, and uh, you've got the output statistics results, don't use the charts from SPSS. Use the chart that you saw in the paper that you had to critique. And uh, furthermore, um, uh, you want to use the format and the presentation of the paper uh, following, you know, the paper that you critique. You're going to see how they presented it. So follow that, follow that general uh, lead. Okay, so um, Excel is in many ways a superior editor than SPSS. Uh, especially the sort function. And there's a whole bunch of if-then statements. And here I've got the procedure for a basic sort um, in Excel. So you might want to learn how to use that because it'll speed up uh, your creation of the data set. Uh, now when you're doing your um, your 1,000 word sort of mini essay for the statistics assignment, it really is an abbreviated report. You do have to explain all of the reports that come in the output. You can't simply say this is the adjusted R squared or this is the F statistic or this is the T statistic. 
or this is the curb linearity test, you have to explain why. You know, why are you using the adjusted R squared instead of just the normal R squared? What does the F statistic tell us? What does the T statistic tell us? So you got to report and explain. Right? Assume that your reader doesn't know statistics. Right? We're not going to let you uh, use statistics to uh, obscure uh, your relationship. We're going to use it to uh, clarify the work you're doing. So uh, you you have here, uh, you know, a couple of the things like heteroscedasticity that uh, needs to be reported, multicollinearity, um, and most of these can be reported in the footnotes. Uh, it's really the R squared uh, that you'd report in the text itself. So the statistics paper format, the structure is identical for both the papers. You're going to follow the sequence and the outline of the paper proposal, both for the qualitative and the quantitative paper. You're, you're not going to discuss a hard case or falsification, obviously, because in statistics, that's subsumed in the process, right? When we do falsification automatically when we're doing a significance test because we're um, uh, we're trying to falsify the, the the null hypothesis that there is no relationship present. Okay, so you can skip the policy recommendation section because you only have a thousand words. So um, yeah, so other issues here we see in the notes. Uh, you're gonna have to uh, basically report the adjusted R squared, the F statistic, and the coefficients and all that. Um, so none of these statistics papers can be submitted until after you've had your data set approved by me, um, and you've got to send it uh, as an Excel file. So uh, don't charge ahead until after you get approval on the data set itself, because I've got to make sure the data set is correctly set up. I've got to make sure you have um, the requirements in the data set. All right, the literature review should contain at least two sources, but you can, you can just go to Google Scholar and stick them into your uh, lit review. This is just to give you practice on a lit review, but you don't actually have to make a profound argument in your paper, so don't do um, a, a deep literature review. Just get two papers, stick them in the lit review if they look like they're related to your topic, and say what they say, and say that you can say better than uh, what they say. So uh, cross-sectional uh, data construction. And this applies both to the uh, logit regression and the ordinary least squares linear regression. Cross-sectional data refers to data from a specific year involving all the countries in existence at that time. So you're going to go onto a data set and choose a year. Now I generally recommend years in which there's lots of countries. So it would have to be post-1960. The correlates of war will give you countries in 1875, but there weren't that many. If you're, if you're uh, you know, in, in the period of, of colonialism, you're really looking at, at perhaps 50 countries that are independent and probably less than that. So uh, I would strongly recommend post-1960, which is after the independence in Africa, you're going to get a much richer data set because of the large number of countries that are available. So typically, if you uh, pick that period, you're going to have an N or a number of cases around 180. Now, this is going to produce a monadic or single country characteristic data set. So you're going to have a country. You're going to have characteristics for that country, um, and uh, those characteristics could be its economic state, it could be its uh, percentage of urban population. Um, there are a whole bunch of uh, variables that come out of the uh, Correlates of uh, War project and the National Military Capabilities data set in the Correlates of War project, where it'll tell you how rich a country is, how big its military is, how big its population is, and you can use those values. I do recommend using Polity for. Uh, it'll tell you about how free the government is in that given year. Uh, and so you're, you would get uh, the correlates of war data set using um, the following steps. You choose a year. Uh, you would then find the National Military Capabilities data set on the correlates of war site, and you can see the link there. Uh, and then you would search and sort Excel for that year, 1978, and cut and paste the entire block for 1978 for all countries into an Excel sheet. Uh, and this data uh, provides values for you know a whole bunch of uh, very interesting tangible um, uh, uh, assets of the country. Um, then you'd go to the uh, Correlates of War website to get the data set MID. Now, what does the MID data set gives you? It's going to give you uh, the level of violence the country experienced in that year. So the specific uh, data set there is MIDB. Um, so don't pick the other MIDs. They're a bit more confusing. And uh, the MID data set contains the hostility levels, uh, as well as other variables like High Act, and um, uh, the country codes for particular disputes. So for the MID data set, you're not going to get a country, you're going to get a dispute, and this dispute's going to have countries. And so again, you're going to use the sort function in Excel um, to search for the uh, disputes. Um, you're going to uh, search the disputes first by country, 
um, the country uh, uh, rather by by year because you're going to be looking for if you're if you're choosing every country rather for 1978 say every country then you're going to choose every dispute for 1978 and then you're going to uh, put that in another uh, part of the Excel sheet and then you're going to merge the two. Uh, merging is is, is um, a manual process that you can certainly do it by code in Excel, uh, but it can get a bit involved. So you simply make cut and paste each dispute um, with its matching country. Now some countries are going to have more than one dispute, and you've, you're going to think, you know, are you going to add the disputes up uh, in terms of their MID values? Are you going to get the average? Are you just going to take the highest value that they attained that year? So that's a, that's a choice you make as a scholar. Okay. Now most countries, of course, will not be in a dispute in a given year. So 1978, maybe 10% of the countries were in a dispute and the other 90% were not. And that's normal. Right? Countries are not in disputes all the time. So uh, in a cross-sectional uh, data set for a, a given year, most of the countries will be at peace. But that's good because you want variation on the dependent variable. You want the dependent variable to show both peace and war. So you're aiming here at three independent variables, um, which would come from the National Military Capabilities data set and plus the Polity 4 data set. And you know, don't worry, I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to show you how to actually do this using an Excel file, uh, but not yet. Um, and uh, then you're going to match up the dependent variables, and then you're going to uh, email the data set to me. And then um, I'm going to approve it. And then you're going to go and do your uh, statistical analysis, which you can do at home or you can do in the lab. Um, and you can always get feedback from me in the lab. And um, uh, you know, once once you've finished processing the statistics, which which really should take just a few minutes, right? it's a couple of uh, clicks of a button, and you get the results. And then you have to do the write-up. And then you write up your paper, and then you uh, send that to me uh, for a, a correction. Um, so. Uh, here is the uh, data for the uh, Polity 4 uh, data set. It can also be sorted by country, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, in the data set, you're occasionally going to get missing data codes, like minus 9, minus 66, minus 77, minus 88, or minus 99. Um, interpolation is when you don't have a data point and you make it up. And you know, in time series, it's much easier. You just take what happened last year. Uh, you take what happened next year and you sort of average them out. But in a cross-sectional database, it's, it's guessing is is absolutely uh, um, dangerous because there's no reference point. If you have a case and that case is missing e the data for even just one of the three independent variables or the dependent variable, you have to throw it out. So you're going to see that up to 10% of your cases are going to be thrown out simply because it wasn't reported. And they're not always small countries like Antigua uh, or Sao Tome and Principe who uh, are simply um, too small uh, to have been um, data recorded by, by a researcher. Sometimes you have big countries who choose not to report certain types of data like North Korea. Um, so uh, uh, you're going to be losing a lot of countries and you have to be ready for that. I mean that's um, that's a, a sort of pretty common experience of those in international relations because not all countries report all of the data. All right, so let's see if we can uh, put together a, a cross-sectional uh, data set for uh, statistics assignment uh, number one. Okay, we're going to start up by uh, creating a data set with a continuous uh, dependent variable, and then we're going to uh, convert that into a a dichotomous dependent variable. So, you know, if you look at the uh, assignment document for statistics assignment one, it's got a data construction for cross-sectional data, which is a section at the end, which basically takes you through the steps. So the data we're looking at here is monadic. We're looking at individual countries and asking the question, in a given year, uh, did they go to war? It's not super realistic. I mean, normally countries go to war because of their relationship with another country. But it can tell us a lot about an entire system when a certain number of countries are at war, maybe those countries are different. Maybe they have lower levels of economic development. Uh, maybe they have a regime that's more authoritarian. And these are the kinds of monadic characteristics, non-relational characteristics uh, you can look at. So you can go on the internet and you can do a search for, say, the uh, correlates of war, which is what I've done here. I've simply done a Google search for the correlates of war. And I have here uh, the website with the data sets uh, and uh, uh, here we go, the Correlates of War project with all its data sets. Uh, you can also do a search for the uh, Polity 4 uh, data set. 
uh, here it'll take you to this website here and you've got uh, uh, individual country regime trends and a lot of details on what's going on uh, domestically within these countries or you can use the links here and that's what I've done here so uh, we'll look at polity for later but first I'm going to uh, choose uh, a year and take all the data for all the countries for a given year so I'm going to start with the national military capabilities data set and this is a data set from the correlates of war and it, it basically gives us information about uh, tangible variables, a lot more than we need, because we need three independent variables, two of which I recommend come from the uh, National Military Capabilities data set, uh, one of which would come from the Polity 4 data set. And the Polity 4 data set, it's continuous, it's, it's sort of a category, it goes from 1 to 10, and it tells you how democratic a country is. National Military Capabilities looks at population and energy expenditure, so this is very continuous data, it's perfect. Uh, it, it fits very well with the uh, requirements for ordinary least squares regression and logistic regression. And then we're going to get our dependent variable here from the MID data set. You know, the MID is going to tell us uh, if there's uh, a war or not, or the level of, of militarized interaction that the country experienced in that given year. And remember that a country can end up involved in more than one MID in a given year, so we have to have some judgment as to how to treat that uh, particular information. And you don't have to have MID as your dependent variable. Uh, there's also high act, uh, which is another variable that's there, um, which is a 21 point scale. So there are other dependent variables that can be chosen that capture the same essential uh, effect of there being a dispute. And the country has a sort of a, a graded level of response. So let's go and collect our national military capability. So this is the link that's uh, contained uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, um, uh, the assignment page. So we're going to go down and look for uh, the data set. So we have here the code book, and the code book is useful. It tells us uh, how to interpret the different data sets. Because we're using uh, data sets, it can be you know, fairly obvious. Energy is energy production. Steel is going to be steel production. So let's go ahead and uh, download this. This is a CSV file, which is like an Excel file. All right, we're going to uh, open it in Excel directly. So here we have uh, the USA, the country code of the USA, the year it refers to. You can see it's longitudinal in the sense that it's the U.S. across time. IRST is steel production. There's military expenditure, military personnel. Uh, PEC is uh, energy production, total population, urban population, and SYNC. SYNC is its overall proportion of power compared to all other countries in the international system as a percentage. Okay, so a lot of the stuff we're, we're not going to need here. I'm going to get rid of... Uh, uh, country code. I'm going to get rid of the version. I don't like sync. Sync is too general and precise, and it very it highly correlates uh, with some of the other values because it's a composite of those other values. So I typically get rid of sync. So uh, these are the independent variables. Now, um, what I want to do is uh, not pick uh, a a time series, which is what we have here. What we want to do is convert this to cross-sectional. So I'm going to pick a year. I'm going to pick 1978. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort the data here under sort. And what this is going to do is it's going to uh, move the data around. So I'm going to get the data by year. All right. So I'm going to sort by uh, column, uh, which is the year, which is column uh, B. And I'm going to go from smallest to largest. And what it's going to do is going to reorder all the data. If I don't highlight everything, it's not going to reorder everything. So voila, here we go. It's got 1816. All the countries for 1816, 1818, 1819. And so I'm going to shoot all the way down here to 1978. Okay. So what I have here is every uh, reported country for 1978. Right. And they're not alphabetical, so it's going to be a little bit confusing. But I can also sort that out too. So I'm going to copy all of this, put it into the next data sheet here, and drop it down. Okay, I'm going to uh, put a uh, line in here, insert, because what I want to have, of course, are the uh, the headings. All right? I don't know. I don't know what don't know what happened to the headings. So I'm going to undo and undo again. Oh, sorry, I undid the wrong uh, data sheet. I definitely don't want to undo this. I want to undo this here. 
It's probably at the bottom, actually. In fact, it is at the bottom, so I'm just going to copy, uh, copy the headings here. The uh, headings in uh, Excel will be introduced automatically into SPSS when we import. It's going to say, hey, do you want the names? And you go, yes, I want the names inserted as variable names. So, uh, you know, you got to save this like a million times. So here we have the state. We've got the year. Um, I'm just going to put this aside over here for a sec. And I want to alphabetize this. So uh, it'll be easier to uh, hook everything up later. So let me delete this line. Highlight the data set this way. And then I'm, again, I'm going to go to sort. And I'm going to sort this time on column A. Sort by column A, A to Z. OK? And this is going to make it easier to find the country. So this is every country uh, in alphabetical order uh, according to some uh, dependent variable, uh, uh, rather independent variable characteristics. Okay, so uh, this is the beginning of the cross-sectional data. Here I've got, you know, I've got two. I can choose two of these independent variables uh, for my model. So uh, I'm mostly done. All right. So the next thing I want to choose is I want to get the dependent variable. I want to get my MID data set. And this could be a bit more problematic because uh, the, the MIDs are not structured by country, they're structured by event across time. And so not every country is going to have an MID because most countries uh, live at peace. So uh, we're going to want to open up another data sheet and we're going to go uh, back to our notes here and we can see that we can get our MID data set from here. Now we're looking specifically at a data set called MIDB underscore 4.01. It doesn't have to be 4.01, but uh, that's uh, a recent version that's probably current uh, at the present. So uh, we'll put this down here, but I think I've already, I've already actually selected. Uh, yeah, here we are. All right. So this is a correlates of war with the various data sets. I mean, just so much here. World religion data, formal alliances, uh, direct contiguity, territorial change, intergovernmental organizations, defense cooperation data set, trade, for those that want to study um, uh, war and um, uh, whether countries that are involved in heavy commerce with each other are likely to go to war. So here we have the MID data set, and we're looking for the MIDB data set. Okay, so it's going to come out of this zip file here, I think. Yeah, here we go. MID. Yeah, so these are um, yeah, older versions of the data set since they go back to 1992. It's good they have that archive so you can refer to changes. Sometimes you have um, uh, paranoid graduate students doing the research and they basically overcode things. They overcode countries uh, to be as paranoid as they are. <laughs> so you got to watch out who you hire. Okay, so let's uh, save this file. We're then going to go collect this file, open containing folder. We're going to grab this file, and then we're going to go dump it somewhere. Let's go dump it in our uh, in our statistics here. So we're going to dump it here. All right, let's unzip it here. Extract files. Extract here. Boom. And here we have. Uh, the MIDB right here. So we're going to click on MIDB, and voila, it opens up for us. So what do we have here? Well, we have a dispute number. There's actually a code book that gives us the history of these disputes. And some of these disputes are pretty good. I'm a little bit critical of the uh, dispute process uh, identification because uh, a lot, there are a lot of disputes that are militarized. In other words, people are uh, um, shoving guns in each other's faces on the Bangladesh-India border. Uh, far more than are reported by the MID data set. So there's no question there's you know a certain bias. But you know looking at a lot of disputes, and we've got the disputes uh, here, 1902, 1863. So the dispute number uh, is sequential by when it was written down, and it doesn't have any uh, obvious logic. Obviously, we're interested only in 1978, right? So um, we're going. Well, let's eliminate some of these things first. Original. All right. We don't want these things. We have hostility level. This is basically the MID uh, five point scale. Here we have high act, which is a lot more detailed. Uh, here we have other variables. This is if it's a revisionist state, uh, which side it was on. Um, we're not going to uh, focus on the end year. We're going to focus on the beginning year of the uh, dispute. Uh, we don't care about the month or day that it was triggered. We actually don't care about the identity either. 
Um, we do care about the uh, countries that were involved in the dispute. So, you know, example, dispute two, you got the uh, United Kingdom and the USA uh, disputing uh, something in 1902. Like, I don't recall what that is. It might have been uh, a problem over the Boer War or uh, something in Venezuela or perhaps um, some other issue in South America. So, um, I'm going to get rid of this value here because it's uh, sort of in the way. I don't really, do I care about the code? Well, we have the dispute number. I don't care about the country code. Those are codes for the country. So here I've got two dependent variables. I've got the start year, and I'm just going to save the uh, save this over here. I'm going to delete this line, and we're going to sort again. And this time I'm going to sort on the year. So uh, data sort sort by column C, smallest to largest. Boom. And we're going to basically go running all the way down to 1978. Let's hope that we have some disputes in 1978, or this is going to be a very sad, peaceful exercise. All right, good, good, good. Lots of uh, people didn't get along in 1978. Go figure. Probably caused by disco. Okay, here we go. We've got this data set. I'm going to cut it take it back up, drop it underneath these values, copy all of this, and you know what I'm going to do, I'm actually I'm going to sort it by country now. The reason I want to sort it by, by country is that, um, let me sort this here, the reason I want to sort it by country is that we have an alphabetical list of the countries on the other data sheet, we want it to be uh, similarly ordered. So. Let's sort the data. We're going to go by uh, column I. Sort by column I. Uh, is e. Bingo. So now it's. Uh, now we're going to cut this. And we're going to go take it to the data set we've prepared, which is not here. It's not here. Oh, it is in fact here. It's yeah, here we go, 1978. Okay, so voila, we have here our dependent variable. We have our independent variable. Now, this is the the really not fun part of this whole process. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take away this dispute number. It doesn't really tell us much. I'm not doing a case study here. Um, what we have to do now is to line up the countries. All right, it's not fun, but it has to be done. And I generally like to prefer to begin from the bottom. Well, let's try to let's try to do it from the top. Let's see what happens if we do it from the top. So um, I have Angola as my first country. 1978, it seemed to have gotten involved in two disputes. So I'm going to cut and set this thing up on Angola, which is right here. No, it's not going to cooperate, so I'm going to put some lines in here, insert some lines, and I'm going to take Angola's highest value for that uh, given year. And Angola, let's see, their highest value is this value here. So I'm going to take the highest. That's my choice. Uh, it may not be methodologically sound. I'm going to have to justify it. So I'm going to get rid of this version of Angola. I don't need it anymore. I've then got Argentina. I'm going to stick Argentina here. I think that was the Beagle Channel dispute with uh, Chile in 1978. And the Vatican had to intervene. Then we've got Bolivia, probably still angry at Chile. Uh, we have got Botswana. I'm going to pick the higher value of Botswana. 1978, you're probably looking at uh, providing sanctuary to uh, anti-apartheid militants, uh, probably the African National Congress. All right, here we have Chile. Yeah, this is definitely uh, Chile versus uh, Argentina in the dispute. So we have Chile, which we put here. All right, okay, now we've got China. Uh, never, never, uh, this, is, this must be their invasion of Vietnam. So we put this down here with China. 
China, China, China. There we go. So and so forth, right? And so we're going to basically lay out all the countries until they're all distributed down here. Okay. All right. And once you're done, you would put zero for all of the empty spaces, right? These are countries that did not have a dispute that year. So they're, they count as zero. High act, of course, is a 1 to 21 range, and hostility is, a, uh, uh, is uh, the range for, um, for uh, uh, hostilities for MIDs. High act is, is a more detailed version of the MID. Um, and so here we have, the depend we have a choice of two dependent variables. You can't use both. Right now, for hostility, we can recode this. We can recode this in SPSS, but you know we can say, you know, I don't want. I want to do a, a logit regression, so I would put, you know, log, log, host, right? And so I can put an if then statement, which is um, if uh, if this value here is uh, greater than say three, then we're going to insert the value of one. Otherwise, we insert the value of zero. Alrighty, and so we're converting this this uh, scale. If it's a four or five, we give it a war, and if it's uh, one zero, one two, or three, uh, we uh, so we would copy this and paste it here. And there we have our load. You can see here there's a couple of spots where we have. Um, here and here and here we have the definition of war or near war. So here we have uh, the two categories that we would need for our logit regression. So it's you know, pretty uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, know that if statement is just so incredibly useful. It's always if this, uh, then that, otherwise that. So it's sort of a three-step process, and it's just one of the most useful functions in uh, Excel uh, for coding. So um, you don't have to necessarily go to SPSS. You can do it just as easily here, which is why I want you to do the uh, Excel tutorial. So um, uh, I'm, I'm just going to move these uh, aside. We're not, we're not going to spend the time to, to um, do anything with these. Um, so I'm going to put them here out of the way. So... Um, the, uh, the next thing to do is to go to the Poly D4 data set, right? We want to add a independent variable that has to do with the domestic process of politics. So uh, you can, you know, get that from here. In the notes here we have the uh, Poly D4 data set. And there's, there's, again, there's a lot of data sets on the website, so you pick the one that works for you, right? And this is what I recommend. You don't have to use these data sets, um, but they're just the most uh, interesting. So uh, again, this is the Polity 4 data set. You have to sort of wander in there and wander around, but I've already provided you the link directly to their data sets. It forcibly displays population, major episodes of political violence. Now, all of this is, is intrastate. You can make a connection between intrastate and intrastate. You know, for example, if a country is the target of a lot of um, uh, terrorism, like high casualty terrorist bombings, 1989 to 2020, then perhaps it's going to chase terrorists into foreign sanctuaries and lead to war. So here's Polity. Uh, five annual time series, 1946 to 2018. Oh, we're on to Polity 5. We have Kudita, state fragility, crime in India, India subnational problem set. So really some uh, interesting detailed issues here. So let's, let's look at this here. Uh, here we have the SPSS series and the Excel series. It'll basically let you get what you want. But let's be absolutely sure that this is what we want. Yeah, we have armed, inter armed conflict and interventions data set. I'm not sure I want that. This is the Poly 5 Regime Authority authority Characteristics and Transition. Yeah, this is useful. So let's go with the um, uh, Polity uh, Time Series. We're going to open that up in Excel. And so here we have it. Um, we've got by country. So again, we're going to have to sort this out because it's just got way too much information. Um, what do we not need? Well, we don't need this. So we don't need the, we need the country, definitely. Uh, oh, I need to enable editing, there we go. We need, we need the country, definitely. We need the year. Uh, flag, fragment, all right, here we go. Uh, we've got here the polity score. How democratic it is. Afghanistan doesn't do very well. Oh, it gets less democratic for a while. These are all a bunch of missing codes. 
Okay, so uh, we're going to want to use this data set here. So we've got a whole bunch of XX. Wow, look at all this. Durability, polity, autocracy. So let me just delete all of this. So we can focus on what we want to focus on. Uh, let's first do a search for 1978. I think we're going to get, it'll be clear, because we're looking at Afghanistan in the 19th century. It could not be characterized as uh, democratic. Tribally democratic, yes, but uh, institutionally democratic in the sense of representatives being sent um, through a process of elections, definitely not democratic. Okay, so let's uh, highlight this block, go to uh, data, sort, and we're going to sort by year. So that'll be column B, smallest to largest. We click OK. Now we're going to look for 1978. All right, 1978. Uh, here we are, 1978. And it looks like it's already been uh, done alphabetically. Yeah, the folks at the Poly4 data set are organized. All right, so we would drop the uh, values in here. And you can see we have a lot of missing data, like Chad, 1978, of course. You've got Debris uh, fighting uh, his civil war. So obviously you're going to get no results there because um, it's too difficult to classify a country, what kind of regime it has when it's burning down. Lebanon, same thing. It's under occupation, partially from the south and partially uh, from the east. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's it. So we're going to take this data set and we're going to bring it. I'm going to close this. We don't need it anymore. Eh, don't save. Oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll play it safe. I don't want to anger the statistics gods. Okay. So we, we drop this here. And again, we're going to go through the same process. We're going to have to line it up. We don't need the year anymore because we know what year it is. In fact, we don't need the year anywhere because we know this data set is 1978. So what we need to do now is, again, to line these up. Now, this is the tragedy. We've got cases like Chad, which um, we can't use. So, you know, we have to find uh, Chad here, which I suspect would be this case. And so this whole case has to be uh, deleted. We just, we can't use it. We can't use data that's missing, right? Uh, and you're going to find cases where one data set has a country and the other one doesn't. So, yeah, Bhutan is, is here and there. Um, let's see, these are, these countries are not, they're not small countries, they're, it seems like most of the large, so we have the Solomon Islands, and the Solomons are also represented here. But you can see that the correlates of war has about uh, 10 countries more than the Polity data set. So we're going to have to unfortunately cut these uh, correlates of war countries that are not in the Polity 4 data set. Uh, then uh, we're going to have to eliminate all of these cases with uh, missing data. Like Afghanistan, 1978. Um, you're looking on the, the verge of civil war, the ver verge of civil war. Um, now, the negative scores here on the polity, we're going to go with the polity uh, data set. The polity is actually the full range. Um, and what it does is it measures uh, minus 10 to plus 10, where minus 10 is uh, autocracy, full autocracy and 10 is full democracy. So it's a, a 20 point scale going from the negative numbers to the positive numbers. But we can go through here and identify all the cases that just have missing. It, you know, it's, it's a problem when Nigeria uh, has, a, has a missing data for that year, uh, probably because they're in a uh, process of political transition because it has so many people. So it's, it's not a trivial case. It's, it, there's more people living in Nigeria and West Africa than all the other countries combined. So uh, Ni West Africa is Nigeria. So um, you would then put this uh, data set together. You would line these up in the same way that you're lining up the dependent variable. And then uh, this would be your cross-sectional uh, data set. And then you would send it to me. And the, the beauty of this is you still have two dependent variables to choose from. You have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven correlates of war independent variables to choose from. You have your one polity uh, for data uh, set in the, in independent variable. And so when you're running this, you can still, you can still uh, at the last moment change your independent variables. I do not grade how strong your model is. 
I don't even grade whether your qualitative paper argument is successful. Uh, everything we do here is focused on methodology. I can assure you as an undergrad, uh, you will find no relationship that hasn't already been found by me. So uh, this is really an exercise in technique and methodology. Later on, you're going to create much more sophisticated models than this, and you're going to find incredible relationships. And you're going to have very uh, sensitive and well thought out models to, to capture the values of underlying concepts that are not obvious. Uh, and then, uh, because that's really, you know, that's really where events occur in the, in the realm of the concepts of legitimacy and uh, claims on, on real estate and land. Um, that's why people go to war. They don't go to war because they have steel production. So uh, what we're doing here is a very crude type of study. Okay, so um, I think here, with, with this here, you have enough to be able to go ahead and uh, work on your uh, cross-sectional data set. Here I'm going to show you uh, the outlines of the uh, time series, the second statistics assignment that requires SPSS, and you're going to see that it's uh, fairly, uh, fairly clear. Um, it's because it's, it's very similar to the uh, first statistics assignment, but I'm going to highlight the differences, and then I'm going to show you how to create a dyadic, meaning a country versus country longitudinal time series data set for your uh, auto regression. So statistics paper number two, time series data. So the second uh, paper has to be a time series. Now the dependent variable must be continuous because believe it or not, I've never been able to find a logistic regression that also does auto regression to compensate for serial autocorrelation, which means uh, you, if, if you're going to do a time series, and you are, then you can't have a dichotomous dependent variable. So it can't be, uh, did the country go to war or not across time? So the, the paper outline here at the beginning is, is almost identical to the cross-sectional. Uh, here we've got calculations that you'll find useful in Excel, such as division, multiplication, and addition. Uh, much of the other descriptions of the requirements of the paper are identical to the cross-sectional uh, paper assignment number one. Uh, here you have the time series syntax. This is the rather the original regression syntax. And here you have the autoregression cochrane orcott method, which you need to cut and paste because you uh, it has to be uh, uh, deployed as syntax. So data construction for time series. Now this is uh, different than cross-sectional. Here we're going to look at a country across time. That would be monadic. But an additional requirement for the time series paper is that you have to have a dyadic model. You're not only choosing one country, you have to choose two countries and you have to recalculate their values uh, so that they're relative to one another. And so this is, uh, you know, we're going to look here at uh, almost like an enduring rivalry, which is two countries and their relative power on a number of different variables across time. The dependent variable is going to be the same. Either you're going to choose the, uh, the uh, hostility level uh, MID or you're going to choose high act from the MID uh, B data set. And so that's going to be assembled in an identical way. I'm not going to show you where to get the National Military Capabilities data set in this video because I did in the previous um, uh, section. So we're going to jump right into looking at the data and then uh, transforming it. So the key here is uh, we're not looking for a given year, we're looking for a sequence of years. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have the National Military Capabilities data set. Uh, here we have a, uh, a sheet where I'm going to put stuff. And this here is uh, a cut down version of the MIDB data set. So I've got to pick two countries that I can compare across time. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I, you know, I've done a lot of work on India, Pakistan. To me, that's fascinating. You could compare uh, Chile, Argentina, Japan, China, Russia, China, Germany, France, um, Israel, and Syria is a fun one. Iraq and Iran have a long relationship. Um, it's just uh, the, you know, the U.S. Mexican relationship. There's a lot of relationships there that we can explore. Obviously, you want one where there's a conflict. Otherwise, we're not getting variation on the dependent variable. Um, uh, when I mean conflict, I mean it doesn't have to be a war, but you have to have at least some ratings on the uh, MIDs to produce 
uh, some results. So two countries that share a common border that are always at peace are not going to be very helpful. And countries like Canada and the U.S., unfortunately, uh, our big conflict was in 1812, which is before the Correlates of War begins. Correlates of War begins after Napoleon. So, um, so let's you know let's pick two countries. I'm going to arbitrarily pick, uh, you know, India, Pakistan, because I find that I find that such an interesting topic, having worked there for um, a great many years. So, we're not searching for year; we're searching for country. So let's start with the. Uh, independent variables, national military capabilities data set that uh, I showed you how to get before. And this time we're going to select uh, for the countries for a given year. So let me move this uh, here. We're going to highlight, uh, well I'm going to eliminate this line. We're going to first uh, choose uh, on the country. So data we're going to sort, um, well, you know what, we'll, we can just sort alphabetically. It should be relatively easy. And it'll sort alphabetically on the first on the first column. So we've sorted alphabetically. And what we can do now is go down and look for India. And here, you know, we have a problem right away, which is the data set's not that long, right? So it's going to be a perpetual problem. So here we have India right up until 2007 from its uh, creation in 1947, or rather its independence. From colonialism, and we're going to put that. We're going to put India over here, and we're going to make sure that we have um, the heading. We want to know what it is that we're looking at. I'm going to put the uh, other headings here in anticipation that we're going to then get uh, Pakistan. All right, so where's Pakistan? Is be way down here. There we go. And so we uh, cut and po paste uh, Pakistan as well. There we go. I keep uh, cutting. I really should copy, so I, if I have to go back, I can find something. So here's uh, Pakistan and India. Okay. Uh, we actually don't need this uh, sheet anymore, so I'm going to eliminate it. But you should never, never do that. I mean, holy cow. You need to save all your data frequently so it doesn't get lost. Um, right, people are constantly losing their data sets. It's 2 a.m., you're running a, a particular relationship, you, you hit a moment of brilliance, and then because it's 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., you forgot what you did and you can't find that relationship again. So you write everything down. You keep a notepad like a miniature code book uh, showing the relationships and the models that you ran. Okay, so we then come here and we have to find all the disputes that involved India and Pakistan. So I'm going to put this uh, here. I'm going to highlight uh, this. And we're going to uh, sort also alphabetically. All right. And again here we have, uh, let's go down and find uh, India. Now we're not going to use the Polity 4 data set because it's not really comparative. Right? I, mean, I guess you could do a ratio of um, democracy to authoritarianism, but I think it makes a lot more sense to um, uh, to look at uh, tangible factors related to power. Those are the things that can be compared. People don't often compare regime types. Um, they do in a sense of uh, one country would look at another and say, well, um, they're illegitimate because they're authoritarian. So you, you do have that type of relationship. Um, Okay, let's go find uh, Pakistan. All right, here's Pakistan. We can copy Pakistan. Here's Pakistan. So what we what we have here are the disputes, and we're going to have to sort of arrange those. Um, for the given year that they occurred. And there's going to be actually quite a number of disputes between India and Pakistan over the years. Okay, so we can shut the MID data set down. Close this up here. So we have here assembled by year, we've got India here, 1947 
to 2007. We've got Pakistan, 1947 to 2007. So we see right away, you know, we have less than 100 data points. We've got 61, uh, and which is much less than the 300 I wanted. But this is, you know, the perilous nature of international relations. We just don't have a lot of data. Now here, we've got various disputes, and we're going to order these. Oh, wow, look at the disputes. Lots of disputes. Uh, we're going to order this uh, sequentially, and um, we're only going to include them uh, if they also have a counterpart with Pakistan. Because if India has a dispute and it doesn't include Pakistan, uh, clearly it's a dispute that is uh, with someone else. China, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, the Maldives, um, Portugal. Okay, so let's get this uh, sorted out. Data. And we're going to sort this, uh, no, not alphabetically. Uh, we're going to sort it by start year from smallest to largest. We're going to do the same with Pakistan. We're going to sort. Well, that's not good. So we want it, we want to highlight the actual criteria, the head, the column headings. So we're going to sort by start year, smallest to largest. And then we're going to distribute. Um, I'm going to put some put some distance here. We're going to associate the uh, events in a given year for India with um, that year, 1947. So I'm actually going to take this here, this list of years, so it'll be easy to follow over here. So. We have here uh, two disputes uh, that India is involved in. In 1947, I'm going to take the higher of the two. We have here a high act. So I'm going to put that over here so I remember what are the variables. So I'm going to cut and put that here. I'm going to clear uh, this in 1947. That's obviously the uh, war in Kashmir. Then we have a war scare in 1949. And then 1950, we have another war scare. I'm going to pick the biggest war scare. 1951, we have a currency dispute. Nineteen fifty two we have something, possibly a border issue over East Pakistan. Nineteen fifty four we have another event. So another thing I could have done, I could have I could have arranged it by dispute and then taken the India Pakistan pairs because actually I'm picking the highest dispute, but I don't know if this dispute is with China. So this is actually not a not a wise way of doing this. We've got some serious validity problems here. I should have actually arranged it by dispute number, but I erased the dispute number initially. So if you're gonna do it, I want to see your dispute number and not do it like this. So I'm gonna have uh, India's version of these listed down and when I'm done I'm gonna then do it with Pakistan. And I'm gonna fill in all the values. Any value that doesn't have anything I'm gonna put a zero. I'm going to put a zero to indicate that there was a piece in that year. All right, so this is the dependent variable. Okay, and I'm going to const I'm going to do the same uh, for Pakistan, and then I'm probably going to find some way of uh, combining them. Either take the average or add them up, uh, or take the higher value. Uh, some some calculation. I've got to make a decision on, on how I'm going to do that, and I can always do it automatically. I can do an if-then statement. You know, uh, if this is higher than that, then take this. Otherwise, take that. So I can do an if-then statement, and then all of these will be filled in. And then I got to pick either high act or hostility, um, and then you know combine the two high acts or the two hostilities, and and generate a single dependent variable. This variable cannot be uh, dichotomous because we can't run a logistic regression that also deals with autocorrelation. Uh, it's 2020, and I have not yet found a solution to that problem. Okay, so let's get into what we do with the, the uh, independent variable. So let me move all this aside. I'm going to sort of fired off in the distance. It's over here somewhere. So we need to take uh, some independent variables and here we're trying to make a comparison, a dyadic uh, comparison. So we want, you know, we would argue that as, as Pakistan gets stronger, it's more likely 
to um, allow events to unfold that would uh, that would end with a confrontation with India. So let's uh, compare something like military personnel. Okay, so we could take the military personnel of India, divide it. Actually, I'm on the wrong line here. So I'm going to do I'm going to do rel mil per. All right, relative military personnel, and it's going to be India's relative military personnel divided by uh, Pakistan's relative military personnel. Then I'm going to do uh, relative uh, urban population, I guess. No, let's do relative military expenditure. Mil expenditure. So I'm going to take, uh, it doesn't matter whether you take India's or Pakistan's, it, you end up with an inverse relationship if one is decidedly weaker than the other. So I'm going to take India's military expenditure divided by Pakistan's military expenditure, which was zero. And what happens when you divide by zero? <laughs> oh, it's, horrible things happen. Uh, I'm, so I'm going to put a one here. Pakistan was wildly disorganized in 1947. It had uh, a, a bureaucracy that had just been imported, and much of the army was actually deployed in the Middle East as a part of the British uh, uh, India army. So I'm going to put a one there. You can't divide by zero. It's a very important philosophic point, and it's the single largest problem caused by people using Excel. So uh, make sure you have no zeros, <laughs> no zeros that are the divisor or the denominator. So uh, here we have a relatively relative military expenditure and finally we could take uh, relative energy right relative uh, energy and that's going to be um, uh, PEC for India divided by PEC for Pakistan and we want to extend these so that it does it for all these. So we're going to copy and then paste all of these down to uh, Boom, and so we have our three independent variables. Right? And so we're gonna run a model with uh, these three variables. And you can see a trend. Uh, you can see uh, relative mil military personnel, India's um, and Pakistan have parity. Then India gets a much larger population, a much larger military. And then Pakistan then builds up, uh, uh, counters the buildup in the 1980s. And then they have, they've had relatively relative stability in military personnel ever since. Military expenditure, I should really take away some of the demos, decimals so it's easier to read, but you can see that Pakistan had a big boost in the 60s, and then it sort of fell down, it picked up in the 2000s, and then it dropped down again. So these are our three independent variables right here, right? Um, and uh, once we've constructed our dependent variable uh, over here, uh, we're going to be able to run our model. All right, so obviously it takes a little bit of uh, fiddling. You're sitting here having to match up all the disputes. And again, use the dispute number. Don't just go by year because who knows in what direction these countries were uh, aiming their military forces. And you can see obviously the data set goes past 2007, so we're not even going to be able to use these additional years because we don't have the uh, independent variable data for it. Um, so you're really just using this data here. And this is a, you know, this is a very rich... Um, enduring rivalry, and you find that in, in the world there are a lot of um, hostile neighbors. So uh, this is the procedure for creating a time series data set. Obviously it would take me probably another hour to finish this, um, but it's not, it's not as time consuming as you think, but it's just it's tedious. And there are Excel uh, features that would allow this to be arranged much more quickly if you knew how to code in Excel. Excel has its own coding language. So that's something for you to figure out on your own.